All right, so behind me, I've got a big array of the different types of gauzes that we carry at mountainmanmedical.com. We have a bunch of different types here. Um, some of it is big and bulky, and others is nice and small and compact. And of course, we like to have small and compact because we don't wanna be carrying a bunch of stuff and we don't want these huge medical bags. So we wanna keep everything nice and tight and small. So having something like this compared to this, you know, is generally a pretty good idea. And this is the exact same size that this is. And the reason for that is because this isn't vacuum packed. This is, so this has got a lot of extra air in it. So to get around that, they vacuum pack it in these nice tiny little squares. And these squares are pretty dense once you have all of the air taken out of it. That sounds a little bit like a brick when I knock my knuckles on it. So this might be a better option for you over carrying something like this. You can carry easily two of these and still not have the same footprint. So this will help you to utilize the space that you have available more efficiently. And this will work if this is all you've got, you gotta use what resources you have available. But if you wanna save on space, then uh, these smaller vacuum packed gauzes are gonna work a lot better for you. We've got a couple of different options here. We've got this from Dynarex, and these are all pretty comparable. They work about the same in my opinion. There's one of these is not really better than the other. It just kind of depends on what you want. We've got this from Dynarex, this from H and H Medical Supply, and this one is the exact same as the other two. This is from North American Rescue. Packaged a little bit differently. I personally like the packaging on this. Uh, this is kind of what I grew up on, I suppose for my medical career. North American Rescue is used pretty widely in the military. So this is something that I usually tend to uh, gravitate towards, but any of these are gonna work for you. Now, what some of you might be wondering about is why isn't he talking about quick clot gauze? Well, I'm getting to that next. The quick clot gauze is kind of a, uh, it's a very good way of helping to control the bleeding. It works exactly the same as this compressed gauze, in fact, it's packaged almost completely the same. If you were to fold in all of these little wings, it's pretty comparable in size to the Dynarex. So we can put this down. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about the quick clot gauze. The quick clot gauze has a hemostatic agent impregnated in it. The gauze itself, the material, has this chemical inside that helps the blood to coagulate. So that's a, an extra added bonus. But you're gonna use this quick clot gauze in the exact same way as you would any other type of gauze. All you're gonna do is you're gonna roll it up into a tiny little ball called a power ball. And then you're gonna shove that power ball as tight to the bleeding artery, blood vessel, whatever it is, as you can. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna, that, that little power ball is gonna put an additional amount of pressure on that artery so that once you get it cinched down with a pressure dressing, that little ball is gonna compress the artery in theory and get that, to, that bleeding to stop. Now, it doesn't always work because you might not be able to find the bleed. Sometimes you might need to scoop blood out of the wound to see where that bleeding is coming from so that you can get this power ball right on top of that artery, and that's gonna help quite a bit. After you get that power ball in place, right where you need it to, then you're gonna just continue to pack as much gauze as you can possibly get in there, and you're gonna pack it pretty tight. You, the reason why you want it tight is because that's gonna also help that additional pressure. Then you're gonna take the rest of the gauze, you're just gonna fold it on top, take a pressure dressing and wrap it around and get that wound sealed off. And that's how you're going to make yourself a pressure dressing. Now, what are some of the reasons why we might go to a pressure dressing over say a tourniquet? So tourniquets are great for cutting off blood flow to the entire limb. And sometimes we don't want that. Sometimes the injury isn't bad enough to warrant the use of a tourniquet. If there's not enough bleeding, if there isn't massive pumping of blood out of the artery, 
then we're probably going to think, okay, this is a bad bleed. We need to get this bleeding to stop because it will eventually come become a problem. But we also want to make sure that we are maintaining blood flow to the rest of the body. So what we're going to do is we're going to pack it with the quick clot gauze with the hemostatic agent, get that direct pressure on there with the pressure dressing. And then that's going to help stem the flow of blood. Now, if you go to use the pressure dressing bandage, you've stuffed it full of the quick clot gauze and it's still bleeding like crazy, time to upgrade to a tourniquet. It's worse than you originally thought, so don't waste any time getting that tourniquet on that patient's limb. And now what I got here is a quick clot trainer. So we're gonna open this up. All of these packaging, it should be very easy to get into. Uh, it might be a little bit more difficult if your hands are already bloody or sweaty or wet or whatever. Sometimes medics will take uh, some duct tape and they'll put one above and below the tear just to give themselves a little more purchase to grab onto so that when they tear it, it comes open easy. I haven't never personally had a problem getting into the packaging of any of these, but just know that that could be a problem and that's a way that you could solve that particular problem. Then when it comes out, you're gonna have this nice little fan fold. And that's all this is. This combat gauze is just gonna be impregnated. This, this isn't impregnated because this is just a trainer. It's inert. Uh, but this is what it's gonna look like. And you're just going to, to roll up a little ball just in your fingers. And you can even tie this if you wanted to. Put a little tie in it. So now I've got this little ball at the end and I'm gonna take that ball and I'm gonna pack it down right next to that artery. And then the rest of this, you're gonna, you're gonna have to hold it. Now, I can't tell you how many times that, that I have lost control of this end and then all of the gauze just kind of lays out in this long tail. It drags on the ground, picking up dirt and twigs. It's no good. Try to avoid that if at all possible. If you can't, then you can't. There's nothing you can do about it. Just continue to pack the wound as best you can and get them to the hospital. Because if this is all you've got, then it's all you've got and you need to make do. But one of the things that you might be able to do, uh, sometimes medics will have a pouch on their kit and they'll drop this into the pouch and then they'll pull from that pouch. And that's an option. But if you're not wearing battle armor, then you might not have a pouch just on you. So you can just put this into a pocket while you work. And we'll use my hand as an example for a particular wound, maybe a bullet hole or something like that. Take that power ball and you're gonna pack it down nice to that artery. And then you're just gonna continue to pack as tight as you can. And if you got it in a pocket, then it just feeds out nice and easy, just like this just like you might have like a tissue container or something like that. And then you're just gonna pack that all in. Once you get to the end, you can pull that out, put the remainder of the gauze on top. Now you can see that this is a decent amount of gauze still. So that will also help to apply pressure over that wound once you get that pressure dressing in place. It's gonna add a little extra pressure because of uh, the smaller surface area that you're using. So you're gonna take that gauze, Put it on there, take your pressure dressing and wrap it around snug, but not tight. Remember that a pressure dressing is not a tourniquet. It is a pressure dressing. It just applies pressure to the wound. If you need a tourniquet, use a tourniquet. And then that's about all you need to do. Once you get that wrapped around and set in place, you're done. And uh, make sure that you're monitoring the casualty for vital signs and any problems that you might have missed in the past. So the pocket might not be the best option for something like this. If it's rolled, it's not gonna unravel very well inside of your pocket. It works better for like the Z fold, especially with the quick clot or the combat gauze. Um, so pay attention to that. If you have a bystander and you don't wanna get this dropped into the dirt, you could hand that to them and then just have them feed it to you as you need it. Always be looking to utilize your resources, even if that's a bystander. A lot of times people will just sit there in stunned silence and not know what to do. It's on us as medics to give them direction. How can they help you? Give them a job, give them something to do. In the long run, they'll probably appreciate it because they were able to help out and they didn't know what to do and you giving them direction helped them to find that path. 
That's all I got for you guys. Thanks for joining me and hanging out and learning about this incredibly exciting topic of gauze. If you need your own medical kit with gauze in it, including quick clot combat gauze, go to our website at mountainmanmedical.com and pick yourself up a Yellowstone or a Sweetwater kit. If you have any questions at all, drop a comment down into the comment section below and I will answer it. Any questions at all. If there are any videos that you would like to see done, um, some things that uh, you've been wondering about for a really long time, drop that into a comment. I'm always looking for content ideas and I'm happy to uh, jump on some of those for you guys. So thanks for sticking it out. I'll see you in the next one.